everyone, welcome back to Beyond Beauty Skin. My name is Cindy. If you're new, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about a really easy three-step skincare routine that's targeted for your skincare condition. And I also have checked out two different squalene cleansers and I'm going to tell you about which one I'm sticking with and which one I'm going to get rid of. So if you're interested in skincare, a little bit of makeup, and life and happiness, you're in the right place, so let's get started. I've been thinking about the trends in skincare in 2022, and one of them is to minimize the number of steps in our skincare routine, and I was thinking, well, how can I best help my subscribers learn to do that? And what I decided is the best way to do it is to grab a serum. It is one of the pricier steps in your skincare routine, but if you cut down to one serum, a cleanser, and an SPF, You've got a skincare routine that can get you through any skin condition. Given the high-tech serums that are out there and how targeted they are and how unique the ingredients are, it's going to be an easy way for you to get into a three-step skincare routine, no problem, and I'm going to help you. So let's get started. I'm going to wash my face this morning. I typically don't wash my face because my skin gets just a little bit too irritated, but um, I'm going to cleanse my skin this morning because I want to tell you, number one, about a new cleanser that I was trying, and number two, about the one that I'm going to be sticking with. So I love the Squalene Cleanser by The Ordinary. It is just a cult classic, right? And I thought, well, I'll just find a cheaper version, and I went for the boots. Nope. This one is a little bit thinner, and I end up having, it's more watery, and I end up having to use twice as much. So the savings was lost, lost in translation there. So I'm going to be sticking with my squalling cleanser. I'm just going to do a quick cleanse. Let me get my hair up. I always like to kind of keep my moisturizers and my cleansers on the less expensive side and really focus my money on my serums. And focus my budget on picking a serum that is super targeted for my skin. And like I said, I typically don't cleanse my skin in the morning because it tends to get a little bit too irritated, but I'm going to use the Ordinary Squalene Cleanser just to get the debris up. I just felt like there was kind of some buildup on my skin this morning. And I love this cleanser. It's squalene base, which is a lovely way to emulsify the skin. It comes off nice and clean when you rinse it with no residue, even though it's kind of like a balmy type cleanser, balm to oil type cleanser. Not quite a balm, but it's a creamy balm. And I just love the way it rinses super clean. I actually used it last night and have no makeup residue from cleansing last night. It just, you can use it as a double cleanse in the evening or a single cleanse in the morning. It's really gentle on the skin, so, and it's super, 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 super affordable, which is really nice because your cleansers you're not leaving on your skin very long, so having all these high-tech ingredients in a product that you're just going to wash off seems sort of silly to me, so that's how I'm going to introduce all these high-tech serums that they have out there, like I said, to focus your budget on your serum versus your skin, your cleanser or your moisturizer. I'm going to review about 12 different serums, explain the ingredients in them, why they might work well for your particular skin condition or concern, and hopefully by the end you'll be able to pick one that you can use with your after your cleanser and before your sunscreen and just call that your three little simple minimal skin care routine. I've broken them down into categories to help you kind of choose and target your specific skincare concern. So the first category is going to be for soothing, calm, irritated skin. The second one is vitamin C and its derivatives for brightening and antioxidants. The third one is a kind of a mixed bag. I have about four serums here. One is a targeted antioxidant serum. One is a targeted resurfacing serum. The other is kind of a lifting and tightening. And the other one is a superfood, what do they call it? A superfood adaptogen serum. So that sounds really interesting. And the last one is an outlier that I'm going to remind everybody that you have to use a fourth ingredient with. So let's get started with the soothing serums that I picked out. So this one is Votary. It's called their Super Seed Serum. And the call out ingredient in this is broccoli seed oil. Now in all of these serums, there's going to be an emollient 
and a humectant. So that's why I'm reminding you that you don't necessarily need to use an additional moisturizer before you put on your sunscreen. All of these serums have an emollient or humectant already in them, and unless you have super irritated skin or you have an outdoor activity where you need an extra layer of protection and moisturizer, then I would recommend that this is gonna be enough for you. So in the Votary serum, there's broccoli seed oil, oat, which is calming, green tea, and a very small amount of salicylic acid. So it could be slightly resurfacing for some, but it is actually a very gentle, calming and soothing serum. So that's the first one for if you have irritated skin, calming, soothing, you might need a little bit of resurfacing with the, S, uh, the salicylic acid in here, but it's very gentle. The next one is one I've talked about quite a few times on my channel. It's the Dew Deliverance Serum. Now the call out ingredient for soothing in this is water lily extract. It also has peptides, white tea, niacinamide to improve tone and texture, and the unusual ingredient in this that I've talked about before too is the cannabinoids in this. It's from the cannabis plant, but it's not like THC or CBD. It's a different, they have different cannabinoids that they've extracted and done a little bit of research on. Like all of these serums typically have at least one or two plant extracts or oils in them. You really can't get away from that in skincare. That's kind of what where the research is. Just running out and finding plants and extracting a particular derivative from that plant and putting it into skincare and see what it does for a skin. So they have found in the research they did, and it was an internal study, but that a low dose amount of the cannabinoids in this product can help smooth, smooth and calm the skin. Now the reviews that I've seen on this tend to, it tends to work best for skin that is slightly oily or normal and is irritated or breakout prone. I like this, but I definitely have to put a moisture on this because I am super, super dry. But it definitely smooths and calms your skin if you have redness and irritation. And the, the water lily extract is that calming property. And it just is really gentle on the skin. So those are your two smoothing and calming serums, the Votary Serum and the Dew Serum. And I wanna talk a moment about price. I actually broke down all the prices and then I realized once I kind of did the math and the ounces to, you know, the ounce to price ratio, they all run about $45 an ounce, almost every single one of them. So some have two ounces in them and they're closer to $100, but some have like an ounce and a bit and they're closer to 60, 50 or $60. So price really doesn't seem to change with these more sort of advanced serums. It all sort of runs about $45 an ounce. Typically ones that are under sort of that price range tend to be like single ingredient serums. Let's move on to the second category I have for you, which is vitamin C and its derivatives. Now vitamin C is brightening, it's an antioxidant, it's got studies to show that it boosts collagen, but there are all these new derivatives out there, vitamin C, for those folks that can't tolerate the L-ascorbic acid, which is the gold standard vitamin C. And as I've talked on my channel, I use the Curology L-ascorbic acid 5%, azelaic acid 10%, kojic acid 4%. This actually is probably, no, actually I did do the research. This is only 18 grams, which is not even quite an ounce. So even though this is $45, the cheapest of the bunch, if you go do the math, it comes out to be about the same. So this is a super creamy formula. I like the fact that it has L-ascorbic acid, which is the gold standard, but not everybody can tolerate that. And it's kind of a creamy formula. It dries down a little bit matte. The next vitamin C serum that I have for you is Dermalogica's Biolumin C. Now this is a big bottle, two ounce bottle. You get a ton in it. And let me find the call out ingredients of this. This is a very interesting formula, I think, um, because it has a little bit of lactic acid, which is an AHA, for gentle exfoliation, but it's also a moisturizer. It has peptides and a water-soluble vitamin C called aminopropyl ascorbyl phosphate, AAP, which is a vitamin C derivative that I haven't heard of, but it's water-soluble. It has a nice kind of light, creamy texture. And if you can't tolerate L-ascorbic acid, a typical vitamin C, this might be a great choice for you. I'm gonna to have to start going down my arm here. But 
It has just a light, fresh scent. None of these, that, none of the serums that I'm going to show you have perfumes. For the most part, they're very gentle and calming to the skin. And this one is a brightener, an antioxidant, and a collagen booster, vitamin C derivative, all in one. The next vitamin C serum that I have for you is by Medicaid. This is their C Tetra Intense. Now you can get one that's not, they have their C Tetra Intense and their C Tetra. This is the Intense formula and it actually gives you double the tetrahexyl decal ascorbite, which is a lipid form of vitamin C. So it's an oil form of vitamin C. So you're getting the collagen boosting, brightening, and calming in a squalene base with jojoba. So it's very emollient and softening to the skin and not irritating. So if your skin is typically irritated by L-ascorbic acid, either one of these formula, the Biolumin C or the C Tetra Intense, may be a great alternative for you. This is the lipid form, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, and this is the water form, the water-soluble form of aminopropyl ascorbyl phosphate. So these are nice alternatives to the traditional L-ascorbic acid. All right, the next group of serums that I have for you are two other single formula brighteners. If you need brightening and you don't really even want to deal with vitamin C, one option that I've used is the LA Effector, and this is licorice root extract. It's kind of one of those single formulas, inexpensive, like on the $20, $25 range. And if you just are, can't tolerate any forms of vitamin C, this is a great brightening serum. I've almost used all of this up, but this is a nice glycerin-based formula, sinks right into the skin, moisturizing and also brightening. So that is licorice root extract. And then also another brightening formula, single formula serum, is by The Ordinary, the alpha arbutin HA formula. And remember, this has HA in it. Just a reminder with hyaluronic acid, you would have to go to that fourth step and use a little bit of moisture over it, or you're gonna end up with your skin kind of drying out a little bit. So, okay, so we've done soothers, we've done brighteners. The next category of serums that I have are kind of unique standalone formulas that each individually have their own purpose. The first one is probably going to be no surprise to you. Um, if you've been on my channel before, I really love the Mysama Antioxidant Green Robust Tea Serum. I typically will use this before a red light therapy session, but it can be used on its own as a nice morning second step to your three-step skincare routine. It has niacinamide, of course, the antioxidant green robois. It's in an aloe base, which is nice and hydrating, and it has great antioxidants to get you through your day. All right, the next serum is one that you can use in a simple evening three-step routine. It's the Il Maquillage Power, Power Repair Serum. This is a really unique serum. You can use it on the nights that you're not doing your Retin-A because it would be too intense to combine this with Retin-A because this contains AHA, BHA, and PHA. So alpha hydroxy acids, polyhydroxy acids, and beta hydroxy acid, salicylic acid. It is a repairing serum, gently resurfacing. It's really done wonders for maskne. This is the one that I was talking about in my other video on maskne and it hadn't come out yet, or I wasn't sure if it had come out yet, so I didn't mention it, but this is excellent. If you're suffering from mask knee, definitely, or any kind of a breakout, this is an excellent serum to use on an overnight routine. So basically you'd cleanse, throw this serum on, maybe put a little moisturizer on, and off you go to bed. And in the morning, it is so amazing. I've been amazed how this has cleared up my skin, and it's really quite gentle and not stripping at all. It does re gentle resurfacing. The only thing is that I don't like to use this during the day because it tends not to wear well under sunscreen and under makeup. So I would definitely recommend this as a nighttime power serum, gently resurfacing serum. All right, a third sort of outlying serum is the Strivectin. I've been really curious about this serum. It is an oil, it has, contains an oil soluble form of niacinamide, which is really unique. It, their own proprietary blend. It's called NIA114. And it's supposed to brighten, improve texture, tone the skin like just the normal niacinamide would, but it's also supposed to be more bioavailable to the skin than typical B3 niacinamide. It also has a tetrapeptide 21 formula. It's super creamy, 
and the tetrapeptide 21 complex is supposed to be a signaling protein complex, it says, that's supposed to boost collagen, help your body form its own hyaluronic acid and fibronectin. And this is the serum that I'm gonna be using today. I've been really interested in this formula. It's super creamy, very moisturizing, and it has, it is in a base of, hopefully they'll tell me here, I'm gonna to have to get the box. Oh good lord, the box was right in front of me. Okay, so the base, so I wanted to find out what the base of this serum was because it seems like incredibly moisturizing. I'm gonna bet it's glycerin. Right up there at the top is glycerin. So that's going to be your moisturizing humectant for this particular formula. It has a light scent and it has so many different ingredients. I mean, really, it goes down the entire side of the box. But I'm curious about this and um, this new oil soluble form of niacinamide. If it maybe is less sort of drying, sometimes niacinamide can be slightly irritating and drying and maybe this one wouldn't be. So if you're having issues with niacinamide being a little bit too irritating or, or drying to your skin, this might be a great formula for you to try out. It's the Strivectin Titan and Lift Peptide Tight. Okay, so the last sort of crazy serum that I have for you that has just a few unusual ingredients is the Dr. Dennis Gross B3 Adaptive Superfoods Stress Rescue Super Serum. That's a mouthful. But the call out ingredient in this is again liquor shoot, so it's not a single ingredient, it's a multi ingredient. And usually, like I said, with the multi ingredients, you get a higher price point, but it's got niacinamide, the traditional water soluble B3 niacinamide, licorice root. But the call out is the adaptogen is the mushroom extracts for the antioxidant and humectant factor. It also has a very small amount of lactic acid, so maybe gently resurfacing, but it's kind of down there on the ingredient deck, so I think it's probably being used more as an, a moisturizer than a resurfacing amount of lactic acid. And the last serum that I have for you is a very basic serum by Medicaid. It's their Hydra 8 B5 Intense Serum. And the reason I wanted to call this out is because it has hyaluronic acid. And if you have a serum that is mostly hyaluronic acid, I wanted to be sure to point out that you are gonna to wanna to apply a moisturizer or an occlusive after that type of serum. All the other serums that I showed you, except the Arbutin with HAs, you do not necessarily have to add a moisturizer on top. They all have humectants and emollients in it. This does have natural moisturizing factors in it, so it might be enough of an occlusive for you. But if you start to feel like you're drying out when you have a serum that is mostly hyaluronic acid, the reason is it's drawing water out of your skin instead of leaving it on the surface of your skin. So you're going to want to add an occlusive. So I just wanted to do a call out. This is a lovely formula. Like I said, I use it often after dermaplaning and then I do put a moisturizer over it. It's a very, <laughs> dropped it all over the table and I'm showing you. It's a fairly thin, watery serum. It does, like I said, have the natural moisturizing factors in it to give it somewhat of a moisturizing base, but it really is mostly hyaluronic acid and you wouldn't want to add some sort of a moisturizer over it. So let's just quickly recap. One way to minimize your skincare routine is to simply cleanse your skin, grab a specific serum of choice that targets your specific skincare need, and then throw on your sunscreen, and that's it. So I hope this serum roundup has been helpful in choosing a serum that's gonna help you target skincare concern or skincare need, and also to help you minimize the number of steps you're taking with your skincare and reduce the confusion about when and what to layer. A lot of these serums have multiple ingredients that are gonna target your specific skincare needs, and you don't need a ton of product. So pick maybe two serums, that are working for you for your particular skin condition at the moment, then cleanse, use your serum, and move on with your SPF and the rest of your day. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, throw this a thumbs up. I sure appreciate that. And consider subscribing to my channel. I would also appreciate that. And wishing you a wonderful, skintastic day and living the best life in your best skin. Take good care, everybody, and have a wonderful day.